Caglier in the house as well. Okay, we're talking travel zoo deals. Yeah. Where's that champagne? Why are we waiting to, I mean, by now it's 8 o'clock. It's <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Producers, well, you're, you're holding the champagne. Uh, <laughs> Listen, if you come back, I will me. have some champagne for you and okay. some socks. Easy, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. But you tell us what what the deals yeah, are. Yeah. So, that and, we can and, get. and Chris, this is a segment that Chris uh, Burrows and I premiered uh, back in uh, early 2006. And I said, how many travel deals should you do? Let's just do five. Do five good travel deals, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, our, our best uh, five deals of the week here as we launch. Uh, 2019 here in just a couple of days. Here's what you want to do. Let's begin with a spa getaway uh, in the Bay Area. One of the best spas in the Bay Area is, of course, at the Fairmont Sonoma Mission Inn and Spa. Uh, one of the only spas in the country that sits on its very own mineral springs. Very curative, healthy waters for you. Okay. So when you get the, uh, you, when you schedule a massage, you get access to all those water rituals like the the, the warm showers and the dipping pools and the and that's a fan, I mean you hang out there for hours. Okay, before and after your treatment. Uh, exclusive deal here, um, uh, 145 gets you a massage or facial, access, full access to the spa. My, the best one is at 285 for a couple's massage. Usually that's 500 plus. Whoa. Uh, so this is perfect for just a day getaway out there or uh, do an overnighter. Yeah, gotta, I'm uh, actually going there. Go. I'm going there mid January. <laughs> oh, you are. My, my uh, friend is a teacher. She has all of January off and we haven't booked a place a to stay. So I'm going to go there. Real quick, I think I'm actually going there mid January too. Oh, really? Because yeah, oh. my birthday is January 5th and I think my wife and I are going to be going out there, I think like a week or two later. Really? Okay, we're going like the 16th, 17th, I think. Just I think tell that's the whole world where you guys I think that's a weekend. <laughs> and what day? Oh. I'll see you at the spa. Okay. Okay. Viewers, if you see them, we'll be we'll be, be in the water be relaxing. We'll be water ritualizing. <laughs> but that's a great spot. I mean, not, I mean, that is one of the premier spa experiences in the, in the country. I'm excited. Right. Uh, we talk about these uh, little getaways. Sometimes one night is not enough. So here are two two night getaways, priced just right and within driving distance of where you are right now. This is in Pacific Grove. It's called the Martine Inn. Uh, just beautiful oceanfront, Victorian style inn. Each room individually decorated with wood burning fireplaces and four poster beds. Three fifty nine for a two night stay. You get breakfast. Breakfast daily plus $50 spa credit for travel all the way through February. That's basically two nights for the price of one. Um, and so you want to do this now here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Maybe you pop into the Martine Inn, uh, can be after Sonoma. Yeah. Just to do an extra, just ask for an extra couple of days off. And in Lakehead, this is now in uh, Lake Shasta. This is the inn at Shasta, Shasta Lake. Very charming inn tucked inside the Shasta Trinity National Forest. I mean, you've got Mother Nature in all her splendor uh, all around you. You can hike the forest. Uh, you can do some underground uh, caves there at Lake Shasta Caverns. Uh, they got a daily social wine hour for all of the guests. A two-night stay for $2.99 for travel all the way through March. But a lot of us are thinking, of course, about tropical getaways. We want to be able to just, you know, put our toes in the sand and have a tropical drink at 8 Oh, seven in the morning. <laughs> Nothing wrong. Here are two two great getaways. This is in Cabo San Lucas. This is the Hilton, Los Cabos Beach and Golf Resort uh, there in Los Cabos. This is an alternative to the all inclusives down there. Uh, this rate does include breakfast. It's two sixty nine, uh, but you get a hundred dollars every day to spend on things like a cabana rental by the beach, or maybe scuba lessons, um, oh. or maybe spa. Uh, this is for travel January through April, right after the beginning of the year. Rates will drop nicely there in Los Cabos, but I know folks who have stayed here uh, and they loved it. And if you want to go further south into Costa Rica, this is the Hacienda Alta Gracia in Costa Rica in, uh, in uh, Perez Celedon, which is one of the last sort of untapped regions of uh, Costa Rica. Brand new five star mountain retreat there, uh, which was named by uh, Travel and Leisure as the number 20 resort in the world. Oh, wow. Condé and Ast called it the number one resort in Central America. Their spa there, the largest in all of Central America, 20,000 square feet. They got these uh, horse stables there. So it's an aquarium. You're galloping through the, through the countryside there. $1.99 gets you a suite with breakfast daily at Hacienda Alta Gracia. If you're looking at a honeymoon or an anniversary trip this year, uh, you wait till about the beginning of the year. That's when it gets a little rainier, but so what? There's nothing like galloping on horseback in the rain. Especially if you're in Costa Rica, but great deal, uh, great offer there. Just a great resort and uh, a great. Group. And I'm sure people are going to email in about how good your uh, pronunciation is, but people may not know. But tú hablas español. I hablo español. Well, soy chileno. I'm, I grew up in Chile, yeah. and it's uh, you know I got here when I was a kid, and this is home now. But yeah. Uh, I gotta, you gotta maintain, you know, it, it impressed the wife enough that she, you know, she said, <laughs> and that's 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 what I use. You it know, for. I think probably would also impress the wife. 
His yeah. socks. Okay, yes. Yeah, so on the weekend, so you would be live on the weekend show. Yeah, and so right. uh, we would toss out to you. And uh, and I was an intern back then, so I'd sometimes be in the back, like getting your shot set yes, up. Yes, right, right. And uh, so he would always want to see your socks. And I would say to Chris, you know, it's, it's a little gauche to just throw your feet up on the set. Come on, yeah. absolutely not. And I think ever since Chris had me do this. <laughs> Uh, and mind you, this is not pl like this is what I would have worn whether or not we did this segment. Yeah, because right? you totally forgot when I said, "Hey, yeah, like I'm what are we doing?" You. Yeah, and and, um, and yeah, this is a, 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 with those segments with Chris Burroughs is what re what kind of tipped me off to the fact. You know what? People notice socks. I had a tie fetish. I've always had a tie fetish, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I I own way too many ties. By the way, another fashion tip: if you can get your um, shoe, can we come back live real quick? If you can get your shoe to match your shirt, that's an even bigger uh, bigger bonus. Oh yes, I like can it. Come We're back showing... live real quick. Uh, there it is. See if you can get your shoe to match your shirt, an even bigger bonus. Anyway, yeah. Look at uh, you. We were showing some photos of you uh, at KTLA because no matter where he went, he took him. He took that, you that with was, him. That, that's what was so great about Chris. Uh, it was taboo to wear shorts or even mention you wore shorts behind the set. But the fact is that in summers in LA, you wear shorts yeah. under the set, uh, behind the set. Uh, my kids, Gabriel and Grayson, he was always like, "Hey, bring the kids in, and we'll get them on set." Uh, Lynette Romero is his uh, longtime uh, co-anchor there. Uh, yeah, day one of this show there in LA, the. It, they wanted to make it an all new show, no guests. But Chris is like, you know what? I had this guy I know. He does these travel segments. Get him on the show. I was the only guest on that show. And for a long time, I was weekly doing you know, these, these travel segments. Um, and I'm still a travel contributor for them uh, there. In fact, I'm calling into the show here as soon as we're done to, to talk about uh, Chris. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, I was, I was kind of riding his coattails uh, throughout, uh, throughout his career. Um, and. Uh, obviously, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, and you wouldn't be the only one because he really, if he saw talent in you, yeah, you were, he, he, you were he, with he him liked forever. to milk it, and yeah, he liked yeah. to kind of. You know, but again, it, it all came back to: Will this make memorable television? Will this connect with the audience? Will it make the audience want to respond and engage with it? And that's what he did so 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 beautifully. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend over at KTLA, and we were talking about how Chris would always. In the sweetest way, and oftentimes even not in the most diplomatic way, but make you feel uncomfortable on yeah. camera when you're on the film. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was always to again bring out the best in you and make good TV. Yeah. Like, even if it requires. He would and throw the most random. Sometimes these these questions, like I'd be doing my segment on my prepared stuff, and he would just throw like a random yeah. question <laughs> that would kind of put. But I kind of. Enjoyed that because it made sure you stayed on your New toes, toes yep. and it forced you to, to deliver a, a message point that was sometimes, yeah, a little not as diplomatic as, as you know, behind the scenes, these, you know, the powers that be sometimes probably. And this is what some, I think what this station and what KTLA did really quite well is to give him plenty of his leash was long. Right. Yeah. Give him free reign. It's, it's a little nerve wracking for people who are behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, our, our boss <laughs> signing had the a fund. She bought a car after he left because she had a fund because she was so nervous he was going to yeah. get her fired. Yeah, yeah. But it, it obviously, you know, it, it obviously worked. So he was a self-deprecating kind of guy in a very lovable way. Yeah. Uh, again, in a business that is really all about, you know, it's a very sort of self-involved business. Yeah. You know, and uh, he didn't care. To, he talked about the fact that he was he was concerned about his, his receding hairline, or the fact he had he had just had surgery to kind of uh, minimize his double chin, <laughs> or that he had a bit of a weight thing going on, and, yeah. and he engaged the audience because you know what? It's relatable. I have a receding hairline too, <laughs> and I worry about my weight, <laughs> and I think I might need. But let's you see. do not need it. Uh, no, you no, do I'm not totally need kidding, it. I'm totally uh, coming up later on in the hour, we have Alan, the intern, who's going to be here, and uh, we'll be sharing. I think Alan might shave his head again. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Uh, no, no, definitely uh, not. Do that again? Mm. Okay. Oh my gosh, I, I will never forget that day <laughs> when that happened. Uh, so we'll uh, be sharing more stories of our friend Chris Burrows. Happy New Year, guys. Yeah, Thank happy you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for being, being here. here. Oh, 